May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Wisdom speaketh, but is anyone listening? Wisdom crieth out in the chief place of concourse, hoping for a response, but does anyone care? The whole universe articulates the glory of God and the wisdom of divine creativity, but we are too busy to notice. Day after day, wisdom speaks through sunrise and sunset, through birdsong, through the human voice, through music and synchronous encounter, but we seldom listen or pay attention. The news headlines alert us to the signs of the times, to violence in the Middle East, to the murder of one of our ambassadors, Christopher Stevens and his diplomatic staff, to anti-American sentiment in Muslim countries. But we go on with business as usual, so it seems. I must point out, and this is not preaching at you, this is not bashing you over the head with the Bible, but to forsake wisdom, to silence her divine voice, is to bring calamity upon ourselves and all the nations under the face of heaven. This most certainly is not a threat, nor is it divine punishment, nor wrath, but the natural order of things becomes unbalanced and lopsided when we turn away from what is truly best for ourselves and what is best for the planet and creation. Moving to our gospel account for this morning, Christ's questions, who do people say that I am? Whom do ye say that I am? Takes us and moves us from the abstract to the concrete, from the generic to the personal. Christ is asking the disciples to see through theological reflection as the most profoundly personal um, facet of our faith in nature. Faith is far more than doctrinal orthodoxy and crossing of T's and dotting of I's. It is lived experience of trust and discipleship it is relationship. You can't really know who Christ is unless you take him personally as the center of your living and your dying. Unless you encounter him at the altar rail in the most holy sacrament of the altar. When St. Peter identifies Christ as Messiah, the Anointed One, St. Peter thinks he has the issue nicely closed and perfectly complete and rounded off and perfect. He imagines that his future is going to be secure and successful. He then becomes incensed when Christ asserts that the Messiah will suffer and undergo the tortured pain of a victim. Remonstrating, St. Peter perhaps sees the Messiah in military terms as the one who will crush the Romans and restore the ancient line of the Davidic throne of mighty kings. Christ's way of life, <clears throat> his wisdom, however, involves suffering and invites us to take up our own cross and to follow him as well. Contrary to the world's wisdom, Christ's wisdom embraces the whole of life, warts and all. Now, similar to other New Testament passages, St. Mark here in this morning's Gospel describes a global transformation and redemption occurring through Christ and our own willingness to suffer, to be transformed in obedience to God, in taking up our own cross and following the Lord of life. The crucial question of suffering 
came up in our catechumen class yesterday. So let me say this first of all. God does not relish suffering. But following God's wisdom does mean sacrifice at key moments of one's life. Seeking the well-being of planet Earth may lead initially to diminished profits in certain parts of our culture. Seeking the well-being of others may not offer any profit to us whatsoever, but those actions may, with God's good grace, lead to planetary survival, to new creativity, and a sustainable future for our children and our children's children. In the long run, sacrifice today, losing our life, letting go of our small ego, and identifying with the well-being of the planet and all its multifaceted creatures leads to a brighter and more hopeful future. In letting go of the grasping, the selfish, self-interested and impatient ego, we discover a lively and interdependent world in which we are partners with God in healing the earth. We can discover a peace of God which passes all understanding because our spirits embrace the divine perspective in all its expansiveness as well as in the minute details of daily life down to earth ordinary life. This is what wisdom teaches her children. And that which Christ tries to teach the ever enthusiastic and remonstrating Saint Peter. So may we all be open to the spirit of truth and to the divine wisdom which calls us to respond in faith and hope and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.